This is Unit 4, Similarity, Lessons 4.2, Similar Triangles and Parts. Please make note of both the date, time, and location that you're watching this video, and don't forget to get a parent guardian sign-off. All right, in the last chapter, we talked about how triangles can be congruent using the following shortcuts. And we were talking about triangles being congruent, and the shortcuts are side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side. We're going to state whether the triangles are congruent or not. If so, specify the shortcuts, side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side. If not, write not congruent. I'll do the first one, you do the rest. So we have here a pair of congruent sides. We have a pair of congruent angles and another pair of congruent sides. So the shortcut here is side angle side. So from here, what I'd like you to do is take 30 seconds and go through this entire page on your own marking the sides with S's and angles with A's, and then return and check your work. All right, let's take a look here. In this diagram, we have a freebie side. There's an S, and then we had a pair of angles and another pair of angles. So this one was angle, angle, side. You could have also said side, angle, angle. Here, we have a pair of sides, and we have here mismatched sides. Notice the sides are not on the same corresponding side. So this one is going to be not congruent. Taking a look here, we have a pair of angles, another pair of angles, and then a side. So this one's going to be angle, angle, side, or side, angle, angle, same thing. Here, curiously enough, we have three pairs of angles. This does not prove congruency. Angle, angle, angle is not a congruency shortcut. So here, this would be not congruent. And here, we have a pair of angles. We have another pair of angles and then a side. So this one was angle, angle, side or side, angle, angle. Same thing. Let's move on to new material. So just like there are shortcuts for triangle congruency, there are shortcuts for triangle similarity. Shortcuts for triangle congruency, shortcuts for triangle similarity. Let's clarify again the difference between congruency and similarity. Congruency means the triangles are exactly the same shape and same size. Same shape and same size. That's congruency. Now, similarity means things have, notice the difference in the symbols here, that's a congruency symbol. This is a similarity symbol in hot pink. The difference here is things have the same shape, but different size. That is similar, same shape, but a different size. And we have four shortcuts for congruency. That's side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. These give us congruent triangles. Today we're going to talk about, well, if we, don't have, if we have triangles that are same shape and different size, what are the shortcuts? 
for making triangles similar. And those shortcuts are The first shortcut is what's called angle, 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 angle. And what this says is if you have two congruent corresponding angles, then the triangles are similar. And remember, similar, same shape. different size. So here, if we have two corresponding congruent angles, so there's one set of angles, put an A, and if you have another set of angles, congruent, put an A, so if you have two pairs of corresponding congruent angles, the triangles are similar. Now remember, when you have similar triangles, you have scare, which means congruent angles is the CA, and then once you have similar, you also know that the side ratios are equal, which it allows you to start doing these kinds of things with the sides, making proportions which is the bulk of this chapter. So once you use a shortcut to prove similarity, you can start working with proportions. Angle angle is by far the most common. Put a little star by it. One thing you want to look for is overlapping congruent triangles. Let me give you an example here. Let's draw in a triangle here. I'm going to use green, and then here, purple. This green and purple triangle, if this is a right angle, they share this angle here at the toe. That's the reflexive. So in this case, the purple triangle and the green triangle. have angle-angle similarity. The next one says, if all three corresponding sides, now not congruent, because that would make it side, side, side congruency, but all three corresponding sides are proportional, then the triangles are similar. Remember, proportional means that the ratios are equal. Give you an example. Let's say this was a 3, 4, 5 side length triangle. And this here was a 6, 8, 10 length triangle. If we notice, if we go from left to right, that's going to be a 2 to 1 ratio. Circle, arrow, 2 to 1 ratio. Circle, arrow, 2 to 1 ratio. So all three side ratios are the same here. Therefore, we would say the triangles are similar. All three side ratios are equal. Notice that's the last part of scare. 
ratios equal. Side ratios equal. That's a similarity. Last one says is if you have uh, one pair pro proportional sides, one pair congruent angles, and then one pair proportional sides again, then the triangles are similar. This is called side angle side similarity. I'll give you an example as soon as you get that written down. In this situation, we have proportional side ratios. 6 to 3 is 2 to 1 proportional side ratios, again 2 to 1, and then we have a congruent angle in the middle. This is called side angle side similarity. Let's do an example together. Okay, given in this top diagram, note these little arrow feathers means these sides are parallel. Whenever you see parallel sides, always take the time to stretch them out, please. Always, always, always stretch out parallel sides. Once you have parallel sides, let's darken one of our stir sticks here, which is a transversal. Not only do I want you to always stretch out parallel sides, but whenever you have parallel angles, I want you to hunt for armpits of the Z, which we have going on here. Take a look. Armpits of the Z. So we're going to mark these angles here congruent, which they are, because of armpits of the Z. So we hatch, hatch. We put an A here. Then we have vertical angles. We put an A. So these two triangles right here, RQP, triangle, RQP, and then triangle CBP, RQP, CBP, are similar, which means they're the same shape but a different size by angle, angle, shortcut, similarity. I'd like you to take one minute and intend to determine in these three scenarios which shortcut they are similar by. Go. Okay, let's see how you did. Well, here, let's check our proportions here. We're going to go here. We have our short side, our medium side, 
and our long side. And over here, there's our short side, our medium side, and our long side as well. So here we're going to go short to short. So short to short, we have 25, 24 to 54. 6 goes in here 4 times, and 6 goes in here 9 times. So it's a 4 to 9 scenario. Let's check here. And here, medium to medium. That's 36 there. 9 goes in there 4 times, and 9 goes in here 9 times. That's a 4 to 9 ratio. And then here, that's obviously a 4 to 9 ratio. So this one is side, side, side similarity. This one on the right, we have a pair of congruent angles, and then we have another pair of congruent angles. So this one is angle-angle similarity. Here, 24 to 42, 6 goes in here 4 times, and 6 goes in here 7 times. Let's take a look here. 8 goes in here 4 times, and 8 goes in there 7 times. Then we have the angle on the middle, so this is going to be side angle side similarity. Okay, so those are our shortcuts. Now we're going to talk about dimensions and similarity. It's very important, dimensions and similarity. Things that are one dimension. The first dimension is just length. Just length. And when you have things to the first dimension, it's like saying the ratio A and B, A to the first, B to the first. And things that have length would be sides of items. And believe it or not, I want to point this out to you. Think perimeter. Walk around perimeter here. Walk around the perimeter here. That would be the perimeter of the yard. Now technically you could unwrap that perimeter into one long length. So, in one dimension, length is one dimension. So, a side of triangles would be one dimension. Perimeter would be one dimension. Anything that's strictly length is one dimension. Now, two dimensions is length and width. And if you have a ratio in two dimensions, it's like A and B, A to the second, B to the second. So something that has two dimensions would be area would have two dimensions. Now, three dimensions is length, width, and then we add height. When we start talking about volume or 3D items, that has three dimensions.
Whatever ratio you start out with here, that's going to be A and B to the third power. Now watch very closely. In the first dimension, we have A to the first and B to the first. In the second dimension, we have A to the second, B to the second. And in the third dimension, we have A to the third and B to the third. Really important that you get this simple concept. The exponent of the ratios changes with the dimensions. The exponent of the ratios changes with the dimensions, first, second, and third degree dimension. I'd like you to say that again to yourself and fill in these blanks. Say it out loud, fill those in. Another concept you need to get understand very carefully is things that have the same dimension have the same ratio. Things that have the same dimension have the same ratio. Things that have the same dimension have the same ratio. I like you to say that to yourself and fill in these blanks again, please. So, knowing this, this is really important. If two triangles are similar, then all their parts are similar. Sides, perimeter, medians, altitudes, angle bisectors. All of these are only one dimension, therefore they share the same ratio, which is A to B to the first dimension. Give you an example. Dealing with perimeters. If we have a side to side ratio, side over side, whatever the ratio, if these triangles are similar, whatever the ratio of the sides are, it's going to be the same as the ratio of perimeter all the way around to perimeter. Side over side equals perimeter over perimeter. Remember side over side ratio, another name for that is scale factor. So side over side equals perimeter over perimeter. Let's do an example together here. It says triangles EFG and PQR are similar. Side EF is 12 centimeters side PQR is 8 centimeters. The perimeter of EFG is 36. We want to find the perimeter of PQR. So here we have two similar triangles, EFG and PQR, and they're the same shape but they're different sizes, so make sure you draw them different sizes just for visual reference, EFG and PQR. 
They are similar, so put the similarity sign there. And we are told E to F is 12 centimeters. So remember we trace sides. EF is 12 centimeters. Cross it out. PQ is 8 centimeters. 8 centimeters. Cross it out. The perimeter of EFG, so perimeter means walk it all the way around. So all the way around. And we're just going to write P equals 36 centimeters. So the perimeter there is 36 centimeters. The perimeter here, we don't know. So we're going to put a little question mark here. Now, because they are similar, we can make a ratio. So we're going to set up a ratio here. And remember, our previous ratio said this. One side over the other side equals perimeter over perimeter. Side over side equals perimeter over perimeter. So now we can do circle plug check. Circle side. We're going to pick up this side. It's 12. Over circle side. Pick up this side. It's 8 equals circle perimeter back to the left perimeter 36 over unknown perimeter unknown perimeter x cross multiply and solve for x You should have gotten here x equals 24 centimeters. Don't forget to re-add your units there. So the perimeter here all the way around is 24 centimeters. By the same token, side over side, equals altitude over altitude. Because again, they're all just length. Same dimension, same ratio. All of these components are one dimension. Same thing with median. And a median, the side over the side equals median over median. Remember, the side over side also has another name. That's called scale factor. So the ratio of the sides is the same as the ratio of the altitudes. Ratio of the median, same as the ratio of the sides as well. And our third triangle gut that we've dealt with is an angle bisector. Now, something interesting happens with angle bisectors. In an angle bisector, the sides are proportional to the segments created by the bisector. For example, sweep this angle, and I'd like you to retrace this angle bisector. Remember, it's cutting in half. 
The point of intersection is C. C is not the midpoint there. Be very careful. Don't put hatch marks there. But this is true. The ratio of this side over the other side of the triangle is the same as this segment created by the angle bisector over this segment. Side over side equals segment over segment when you're dealing with an angle bisector. So on that note, here we have an angle bisector, which means side over side equals segment over segment. Please rewrite your equation. And now we'll circle plug chug. Side, side, 21. Over the other side, 14. Equals segment, 9. Over the other segment, which is x. From here we can cross multiply and solve. I'm going to show you a trick here to cross multiply. We're going to do 21 times x equals 9 and 14. Don't actually multiply 9 and 14. We're going to divide both sides by 21 here. And the trick here is just immediately reduce. 3 goes in here 3 times. 3 goes in here 7 times. 7 goes in here twice. 3 times 6. X equals 6. One simple more example. Really important you catch this here. I want you to think about this. Remember that the, ratio, the exponent of the ratios change with the dimensions. So I just want you to answer this question. If you double the length of the sides of a rectangular yard, what do you think happens to the area of the yard? If you double the length of the sides of a rectangular yard, what do you think happens to the area of the yard? I actually want you to think about that. If you double the side length of a yard, what do you think happens? Let's actually check this out. Let's say we have a yard here that is 10 feet by 5 feet. 10 feet by 5 feet. Let's double all the side lengths. So 10, we're going to double 10, we're going to get 20 feet and double this side, we get 10 feet. Now, our first dimension ratio, which is our scale factor, remember that side over side, our first dimension ratio, 10 to 20, is a 1 to 2 ratio. Now let's actually check the areas here. The area here is 10 times 5, which is 
50, let's say A equals 50 feet squared. The area here is 10 times 20, which is 200 feet squared. Now watch carefully what happened. 50 to 200 is not a 1 to 2 ratio. Instead, look really carefully. 50, if you have 50 cents, you're going into $2.00. That is a 1 to 4 ratio for the area. What happened? Our ratio in the first dimension is 1 to 2. When you go to the second dimension, the exponents change to 2 as well. So technically it's 1 squared and 2 squared, which is a 1 to 4 ratio. So when you change dimensions, you change the exponents of your ratios.